What you're looking at right now is a fully working sliding puzzle game built entirely in Scratch. The tiles can be clicked and swapped. A timer tracks your progress, and once the puzzle is complete, it celebrates your win and shows exactly how long you took. In this series, you're going to build this too, from scratch. By the end of episode three, you'll have a fully interactive puzzle, complete with drag and drop logic, real-time feedback, wind detection, and a working timer. If you've ever wanted to go beyond simple animations and build real puzzle game logic in Scratch, this is where you start. Let's build the core logic, block by block. To get started, create a new sprite called Tile. This will be the only sprite managing the puzzle pieces. Then, upload nine square images as costumes. If you don't already have your image sliced into nine equal parts, you can use an online tool like Design Hub. It allows you to upload your image and split it into a grid with ease. In this project, each costume is 320 by 180 pixels. I've resized them down to 40%, so they appear slightly smaller and cleaner on the stage. Next, we move on to initializing the variables that will control the layout and logic of our puzzle. Create three variables, grid size spacing and tile ID, which should be for the sprite only. Set grid size to three for a three by three puzzle. Set spacing to 130 to give enough space between tiles. You can adjust this value depending on the size of your image slices. The tile ID variable will store which image slice a tile is currently displaying. Now, create two global lists. Tile list to track the current order of tiles. Goal list to store the correct or solved order. When the green flag is clicked, we trigger a custom block called draw. This will handle all the setup logic. Inside the draw block, start by clearing both the goal list and the tile list. Then set grid size, spacing, and any other base variables. Now create a new variable called i. This can be global. Use a repeat loop with the expression grid size times grid size. This gives us a loop from one to nine for a three by three grid. Inside the loop, add the current value of i to the goal list. Then increment i by one. This populates the goal list with values from one to nine, representing the correct tile order. Next, we reset i to one and create a new variable called input string. This variable will contain the randomized order of tile IDs. Using another repeat loop that runs for the length of input string, we extract each character from the string and add it to the tile list. This becomes our shuffled version of the puzzle. Finally, we broadcast a message called spawn tiles. When the spawn tiles message is received, the tile sprite runs a cloning loop. We set i to one and repeat for the length of tile list. Inside the loop, we assign a value to a variable called myIndex, which is specific to each clone. We then create a clone of the tile sprite and increment i by one. Each clone will now execute logic under the when I start as a clone block. We begin by setting tile ID to the item in tile list that corresponds to the clone's index. Then we switch the clone's costume based on the tile ID. For example, tile four, tile nine, and so on. We calculate the row and column using a bit of math. The row is determined by taking the floor of my index minus one divided by grid size. The column is calculated using the modulo operator, my index minus one mod grid size. To position each tile correctly, we calculate the X and Y coordinates 
x is determined by multiplying the column by the spacing, then centering it by subtracting half the grid's width. For y, we introduce a helper variable called set y. This centers the entire grid vertically. The y positioning includes a tweak to compress the grid slightly by dividing the row value by 1.77, which was a visual adjustment based on the costume height. Finally, we subtract 60 pixels from set y to shift the grid slightly down for better alignment. Once the position is set, we show the clone. With this complete, you should see a full puzzle grid rendered using clones of a single tile sprite, each showing a different slice of the image. This forms the visual foundation of our sliding puzzle game.